you should secure your virtual networks. Have you ever seen one of those movies where they attack the castle? First, the enemy has to pass through the outer defenses to approach the gate. Then they have to breach the gate while being shot at from above. And once inside, the battle with the foot soldiers begins. And the way you protect a castle is the same way you protect your networks. This is called defense in depth. So you set up multiple layers of security using different kinds of resources because no single tool can do the entire job and provide redundancy and redundancy and redundancy. Now to do justice to each of these layers, we need to do multiple videos. So today we'll just be starting with a new service that can manage both connectivity and security. And it's called the Azure Virtual Network Manager. This service centrally manages your networks by creating groups and configurations, then controls the deployment of all of the connectivity and security to your virtual networks. But that's just the beginning of the story because defense in depth means you don't rely on any single tool. Let me show you what I mean. Here's my virtual network manager and I have four different network groups that cover 120 virtual networks. Each group also has a different topology. So how should we manage all of this using Defense in Depth? Well, in a high level, we can configure security rules to enforce the critical guardrails for the entire environment. Then at the lower level, give the individual teams the flexibility to maintain their own NSGs, WAFs, or firewalls. One of the benefits of sharing work like this across different teams is that the decision of what's allowed to come in at that high level through the front door, uh, uh, no, not, not that front door this front door. That decision can be made through your governance or network security admins. And for all those individual application teams, they can manage network security at their own level. This will minimize all the operational overhead while giving greater flexibility to each team to manage themselves. And after all, no one knows their apps better than they do. So here's a real world example. I have multiple applications and they all need different ports in different directions for their own specific use cases. And that's all controlled by the NSGs at the subnet layer. Then we have the Azure Virtual Network Manager, which is guarding the gates of the castle. Now, what if port 1080 was being used by this nasty bug and you just need to whack it, but you've got 100 virtual networks and each of them has three to five different subnets and each one of those has a network security group. And that means you have to manage over 300 NSGs to block 1080 outbound to the internet. Now that's gonna take anywhere from several hours to several days to implement. Or you could make one change through the security admin rules in the network manager. And doing this at the network manager layer also means that each team doesn't have to be bothered making this change, which is going to save everybody a bunch of time and money, leaving the NSGs alone to do what they do best, which is controlling traffic for their own applications, while you get to deploy changes to all the networks in every region across every subscription at the same time. To do this, open your network manager. And first, let's take a look at the network groups on the left. I have four groups here prod, dev, lab, and those are the environment-based groups. Then I also have a group for all networks. So the network groups can have a bunch of overlap and just keep that in mind as you're planning out all of your rules and configurations. And now that you know how things are laid out, on the left, go to configurations. Now I already have a security admin configuration called common ports. This is the configuration I apply to all of my network groups across all regions. And this is gonna be the simplest way to block port 1080 so we can protect everybody. So if we look at the configuration, we have two rule collections, and then across those collections, we have eight different rules. And currently we're targeting one network group, and that's the all network group. So if we take a look at the rules, we can see the rule collection names of allowed and denied for common ports. Inside the deny common ports, I only have two rules right now, blocking SSH and RDP inbound from the internet. So in my world, you come in through Azure Bastion or through virtual desktop. And that way I have more control over the environment. Now take a look at the priority numbers. Just like in NSGs or firewalls, you can't have two different rules with the same priority. So you have to plan ahead. So I've grouped my rule collections by numbers. So I have like a hundred rules per section. So when I add the next rule collection later on, that'll just take the next block of numbers. I also like to space out my rule priorities by tens. That way, in case I have something else that comes up later, which is a higher priority, I can always go back and add it in. 
So let's add the new deny rule. Click the create at the top and the rule priorities work just like NSGs. The lower the priority number, the higher the priority it's given. So our action is going to be denied, the direction is outbound, and the protocol is TCP. For the source type, we're gonna use a service tag, and that service tag will be virtual network, and the port it'll be applied to is 1080. The destination type will also be a service tag, and that's where we choose internet. And the destination port is also port 1080. Finally, at the top, we have to give it a name. And I like the name to tell me at a glance what the rule is doing. So this is going to be deny 1080 outbound internet. Click the add button at the bottom. Now that we have a new rule in our configuration, we have to deploy it. So click the X up in the top right, and then on the left, click on deployments. At the top, click to deploy a configuration. Check the first box to include our security admin goal state. And from the drop down, select common ports. And since the security configuration gets deployed to a region, at the bottom, we have to select our target regions. Now you could pick individual regions and test the rollout here slowly, which is definitely a good way to proceed, or you can just click select all at the top. So just to recap what's going on, the security configuration is deployed to a region. Inside that configuration are all of the rule collections, and the collections are applied to the network groups. So if you have a network that doesn't fall into one of your network groups right now, it's not gonna be impacted by this at all. So setting up your network groups correctly is key. Now click next and you'll see a list of all of the different regions that are going to be getting your deployment. Once the deployment is complete, which should only take a minute or so, go ahead and open one of your virtual networks. And on the left, click on the network manager then at the top, go to the security admin configuration, and there is our rule to deny port 1080 outbound. Now let's have a look at one of the web servers that I have running in this virtual network on the web subnet. On the left, go to networking, and you can see the inbound rules here that the NSG has attached to our subnet. Then click over to the outbound rules, and we see the NSG rules there at the top, and at the bottom, we can see with a priority of zero, is our network manager rule blocking port 1080 outbound to the internet. And this has the priority of zero because network manager rules take precedence over every other security tool like NSDs and firewalls. So using the network manager at the gate will keep the barbarians out so your NSG soldiers don't even have to fight. And why stop there? You could use the network manager to reduce the app team's NSG load even further by creating rules for those shared services that every app needs, like Active Directory, Azure Virtual Desktop, file services, and more. Centrally establishing these rules means that you don't have to open the NSG port rules a hundred times to get to Active Directory from all your different subnets. And that'll reduce the total number of rules in your application layer NSGs, making management even easier for everyone. And now I'll bet you're thinking that those rules aren't gonna matter unless you have all your peering set up properly to connect every one of those networks. So click over here so you can learn how Network Manager will centrally manage all the connectivity across all of your networks, no matter what topologies you wanna use. I'll see you over there. Happy learning.